United know that this is an important fixture for them. Uh, they have won three of their last four matches. Vair United coming in with a lineup that looks pretty similar to the one they last used. I think just one change to their starting roster here. But uh, Kadeem Davis has been brilliant for them in goal so far this season. And this looks like a pretty solid Vera lineup. Pretty solid, pretty solid Vera lineup. This has been working for them, as you mentioned. A player to watch, Ricardo Campbell. A solid person around the back. He'll be working with Lumsden, Salmon, and Lewis here. But a typical, it seems, uh, about a 4 3 3 formation can turn into a 4 2 3 1 during the course of the game. But a defensive lineup is this for, for Vera United. And that's how we know that Donovan Duke lines up, and that's his bread and butter. So, Marina is his favorite coach. So now you see why there's some similarity between their games. There's the Tibbetty Gardens starting roster for today. Pretty much the same as the one that started against Dunbar Holden in their last fixture. Watkins in goal, Price, Flemings, Pennycook, Shafar Campbell, Garnet, Thompson, Bowers, Morgan, Devroy Gray, who is a former Jamalco stroke fair player. And Anthony Nelson, they're the ones in charge of getting goals for Tivoli this afternoon. Yeah, definitely, especially the Gray. Three goals this season for the Vroy Gray, a former Jamalco slash Vroy United uh, player. He would be happy to score against this former club. And Odin Pennycook has been so good with Barrington Price, the captain this season. Pennycook um, has been a very good one on one defender. WIJFF Captain Horsborough Centre of Excellence is the venue for this match day nine fixture between Bear United out of Clarendon and Kingston's Tivoli Gardens. And here's your kickoff. Fear with Dennis moving through the midfield early. His first pass, though, is pretty poor. Gives the ball away. And the Tivoli in transition. A little bit too much pace on that pass played through. Dennis has no trouble collecting that one without question. One of the most outstanding uh, uh, goalkeepers we have seen in the Premier League so far this year, Kadeem Davis. Yeah, definitely. Uh, for Veer United, we, we talk about the defence of Veer. We have to talk about the man between the sticks because he's the last man that you encounter when you're going to goal. So he has been very good for, for them. Former Mount Pleasant man as well. So... Uh, he, he knows what it's like to, to be in between the sticks and be called into question. And that is why they have conceded the least amount of goals this season. Only five they've conceded this season. So they'll be looking to, to continue that good defensive trend. Tivoli knocking the ball around at the edge of the box of fear. But the effort snuffed away. Here's Campbell for Tivoli Gardens. Campbell being taken care of there by the alert defensive lineup for Veer. And that has been their story this entire season. Their defense, their defensive mindset. When you have a player like Ricardo Campbell that's been around there, you really are safe and secure about around the back. But Philip Williams will be looking to continue that trend of winning against Vera United. They have met six times over the course of the Jamaica Premier League. They've won, uh, well, they've won three times, well, four times, and they've they've drawn other um, the two games. So Vera United will be looking to turn their fortune around, go three points ahead of Mount Pleasant, who played their eighth game, which was yesterday against Cavalier in that five-goal thriller. So they'll be looking to go three points clear, but Vera United, as dominant as they are, they'll be looking to, to get a win against Tivoli. Most of the game played so far, albeit in two and a half minutes, played in the Veer half of the field. Overhit that pass. Just too much work there for Trevant Salomon to, ch to chase. But yeah. good positive start here for Tivoli. Yeah, very, very good start for Tivoli Gardens. That, that 
man that sits in that number 10 role that is feeding the, the passes to the, the right and the left is just need to basically temper down his passes a little bit. The power is too much for them. I'm sure that if the power was just right, they would have gotten some really good chances. Their opportunities would have been much better. So they'd want to, to plug those passes with a little less power and they'd be all right. But well, they've started very brightly. Fear with a forward move, but over the touchline, the ball goes for a throw to Tivoli, who will have to find a fresh new set of goal scorers this afternoon if they are to come out with a victory. Davian Garrison, who was their leading goal scorer last year, not on the current roster. Prior to that, the transferred Colorado Murray and Andre Moulton had been the leading goal scorers back-to-back -back years for Tivoli Gardens. And then if you go back to 2016-17, Teddy Johnson was. So all those names that I've just mentioned are not in this current roster for Tivoli Gardens. And those are where their goals have come from the past four or five seasons. Teddy Johnson, now 41 years old, starts on the bench. People say Cristiano Ronaldo is getting old at 36. <laughs> well, Johnson is five years older than he is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, definitely, and, and Jeremy, in speaking to him, did say that he still wants to make an impact for Tivoli Gardens. You know, he, he said that he'd be looking past as a player. So, uh, not necessarily saying you it, this is his last season, but you would think so. But Jeremy Teddy Johnson still says he wants to create an impact as a player, just at least for one more season for Tivoli Gardens. He can do so, and with this win, they could go fourth or third, knocking. Portmore United off that third spot so it's touch and go for, for, for Jeremy and Teddy Johnson but you can't seriously can't believe that he's just he, he's older than Cristiano Ronaldo <laughs> a lot older but he's a quality player I think a, a role as a super sub could actually be a good role for him because he certainly has the quality skill and vision to flourish in, in the Premier League it's just that at, at his age he may not have the energy and the sort of stamina but, you know, coming on in the last 20, 25 minutes of a game, I can see Teddy Johnson making a huge impact here for Tivoli this season. Yeah, you're not, you're not going to get him in terms of his quickness and his, his skill that he normally has, uh, you know, four or five years ago. But you can have him as a super sub, maybe as an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, maybe, who was a super sub, a uh, babyface assassin. But you would want him to, to still have an impact for you. And we all know, Lance, goals win games. And that is what they want him for. So if, if, he, can, if he can get into that capacity, then that's fine. But DeVroy Gray has tried to fill that role, and he's filled it somewhat okay. You know, yeah. 10 points, equal on points with, with their, their seventh-place counterpart. So three goals of the season for DeVroy Gray, and he's been a menace for, for every team's defence. Let's see if he can be a menace for, for Vare United's defence. Stivoli. Good searching ball inside the box and set across here. The strike, the deflection and goal! Tivoli Gardens, Roshane Thompson gets the strike and they're in front by one goal to nil after six minutes and they've worked hard for it. We did say most of the first five or six minutes have been played in Vare's half. They've spent a lot of time defending. They couldn't keep that one out. Thompson on target. Yeah, we spoke about how lively they've started in this game. A very good free kick in the in the in the 18 yard box and wasn't dealt with properly but fell to the feet of Rashane Thompson. Normally actually a substitute Rashane Thompson, but started and this is the reason why Philip Williams started him. Really value for your money. And that was a very good strike, Let the right-footed strike by Rashane Thompson, and that's one nil to Tivoli Gardens after just seven minutes of play. Yeah, good thinking as well there by Anthony Nelson it was who the ball came to him but he wasn't his body shape wasn't in a position to get a good shot off so he just slipped the ball across for Thompson who is in a, in a much better position and a very good team goal there for Tivoli Gardens after six minutes 
Yes, and you, you want your attackers, midfielders, to latch on to certain, even defenders, when you're in those positions, to latch on to, to those telling balls. And that ball by Anthony Nelson was very smartly done. Knew he did not have much of a space to shoot and decided to lay it off to Rashane Thompson. And Thompson just did the work. Bang, into the back of the net, 1-0 to Tivoli Gardens. This is the start that they needed, and they want to get into that playoff spot. As you hear that Philip Williams said he's taking it one day at a time, but he would love to get those three points against Vera United and if he's starting like this and playing like this then maybe so he'll get those those three points yeah ball is twisting and turning in midfield there for the Tivoli Gardens team but the ball eventually is spraying over the touchline there's Gant with the effort there over on the right Philip Williams must be happy with the start here four clean sheets in seven games for Vera United but this won't be a fifth because they've already conceded and uh bad start here for Veer. Yeah, they wouldn't want to be too, too, you know, antsy in terms of, of that start there. It's just after seven minutes, so when you look at it, you have 83 minutes to come back and win a game, and that's a lot of time for Veer United, and they have the quality. Donovan Duki does have the quality. Persons may not speak of their, their names rolling off the tongue, but they really have made a name for themselves, Veer United, so nothing to really worry about but they have to calm down their composure has to be very very important if they want to get three points in this game but it's early and they can come back in this one fair at the moment boasting the highest win percentage in the league at 57.1 percent and the studio Donovan Duki you know be thinking what he wants his team to do First game for Veer since the 9th of August. Uh, they've been out for three weeks. They did have a bye the week before the games were postponed. So maybe a little bit of match sharpness missing. And as he said in the pre-game interview with you, Chris, uh, because of the, the storm and so on, uh, there was very little that they could have done with training and preparation. So probably at this point, they're just missing out on some match sharpness. Yeah, let's, like, like I said, you don't want to be uh, too panicked in terms of you know your match fitness you maybe use you know for the next 10 to 15 minutes to kind of feel out the game and see uh where you can just tighten up because normally defensively they're they're astute that was just a defensive error a lapse in defense uh, that that normally very united this season have not made so it, you just have to get back your match sharpness and your fitness to to, to make sure you're okay but they'd have to and Tivoli guards doesn't look like they need their match sharpness because they've scored already Ball played across here, Veer with a chance. The ball just bobbling there on Tivoli's defenders trying to avert the danger. Tivoli player down bottom of the screen there. And referee Nemhard just being called to attention there. So up to 10 minutes. Tivoli leading Veer by one goal to nil. And there's a stoppage here with an injury. Yeah, it, it seems to be Ramin Bowers. It's, I think it's Bowers that's down on the floor. It is Bowers. So, oh. Yeah. Straight in Brown. Yeah, crashed in there. Javier Brown tackling him very, very aggressively. And he didn't see him coming. That was part of the problem. So he was yeah. crashed into unprepared. When, when you're unprepared and, and it's a contact sport, especially with the game of football and you're not anticipating that impact or that collision, then it hurts even more because your body is kind of not not getting ready for that impact. If it's not ready for that impact, then the impact would be more uh, effective. So they're just doing that magic spray. I've asked many, many times what's in that magic spray. Nobody can tell me. So I guess the, the magician would never reveal his secret, but hopefully he's okay <laughs> and he's up and running. I guess it contains some level of anesthetics. <laughs> <laughs> but it does work, I can tell you, Lance. You spray it, and in a, in a few seconds, you're, you're up and running. So must be some, some magic in that spray, which is why they call it the magic spray. Typically getting the ball out of their danger zone. Crossed inside here. A bit of a 
bubble there for Watkins in the tip of the goal, but with a smile on his face, he recovers quickly enough. So Bear having to come from behind now against a team that has relatively good defensive stats, the Stivoli Gardens team, giving up just seven goals in seven matches. Only Veer and Waterhouse have given up fewer goals so far this season than Tivoli has, so it's not really been easy scoring against this Tivoli team. Not at all. But it all comes into part with that, that partnership with Adin Pennycook and Barrington Price. They've worked very well in terms of a defensive period. Huge chase here for Messam down the right side with the Lamar Neal pass, but again, Pennycook solid and assured in defense gets things away. Brown fails to control well. Nelson in midfield for Tivoli. Bowers on the right. Brown gets the ball right back into his central defensive zone. Brown had a season at Reno a couple of years ago. Bit of a misjudgment there from Trevon Solomon. And here comes Tivoli once again. Nelson's left-footed effort is blocked, but he wins Tivoli a corner. 13 going 14 minutes in. They want to get as much opportunities as they can, Tivoli Gardens. Starting brightly don't mean that you would score, but they have. And I guess to pressure this team, they would want to, to continue doing that. But Anthony Nelson has been a nuisance so far for, for Ver United in this game, albeit just 14 minutes gone. And he will be looking to continue that. Good. Threatening cross inside. Pennycook thought he won the throw, but he didn't. Look how quickly Pennycook gets back in defense. That's what you want from a defender. Goes up for corners, and then as soon as they lose possession, quickly back in defense. Tipper looking very, very sharp in midfield. Uh, Chris, they've been winning a lot of these tackles in midfield, and just looking a little sharper at the moment than this Vera team. Dennis threatening here on the edge of the box. Yeah, that was some pressure there, I thought, from Roshane Thomas that didn't allow Brown a comfortable strike on goal. Yeah, Brown would not be a stranger to, to those strikes. Did score a good goal against Dumby Holding from a similar position. But it was from a set piece, so wanted to get that one ag again, but too much pressure from the goal scorer for Tivoli. Yeah, an arm there from Devroy Gray, suggesting it's accidental and uh, appears to speak apologetically to referee Nemard and also to the beer number 20, Solomon, who was fouled. And actually, strangely enough, Lance, but he has scored three goals. 67% of those goals were scored with his head. If I agree. Yeah. Veer would have benefited from his scoring ability. Did actually score against Tivoli Gardens back in December 2019 when he was a Veer player. In a 1-1 result, that was. Uh -huh. So he's in the opposite shirt this time. Neil wants the ball and gets it. Under a lot of pressure, though. Campbell, captain. Played with Mount Pleasant last year, but moved to Veer when Donovan Duki took over. Of course, he had been with under Duki's coaching when he was at Humberland and also under Duki's coaching at Mount Pleasant as well. Oh, that's a great tackle from Pennycook. What a quality defender he is. Yeah, that's what you're getting from, from Odin Pennycook. Timed challenge. It's very rare that a player beats him one-on-one, -on -one, so it's going to be very difficult for Veer United, who is mostly known for their defense, but can score a couple goals, so they'll be looking to pressure him some more, but it's going to be very difficult to get past Adin Pennycook. 
Bonilla looking very confident on the ball there. A lot of space here opening, op opening up. Gray failing to win the ball and Dennis now sprints away down the right side. The ball just holds up in the art artificial surface and tricks both the forward and the defender. Alton Lewis challenging. Neil wins it. Neil's pass forward looking for Tyrese Harrison. Yeah, Tivoli player down hurt. So Tivoli leading by one goal to nil at the moment. Very crucial lines. Tivoli mostly known to come back. You know, most teams score their first goal. They're the ones conceding first, so see yeah. this goal once more not the best clearance but anthony nelson did very well to see that rasheen thompson was open and just laid it off and very good strike by rasheen thompson kadeem davis couldn't keep that one out that was just laced into the back of the net so thompson will be happy with that goal because it has put tivoli gardens in front and there's where you get to see the live table if it does stay this way they'll be into fourth position just two goals behind Portmore United in terms of goal difference Portmore United who started the season very lively lands has dropped off and now they're in third position they were in first for a lot of games but now they're in third position after losing some crucial matches yeah, and we were making the point at the start of the game about how competitive the, the points table is because Tivoli Garn started this match in eighth position and in a flash they're in, they're in fourth. And if, if, if they can find themselves some more goals this afternoon, they could, as you said, threaten Portmore for third spot based on goal difference. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So if they do score three more goals in this game, then you see them going into third position because they would have plus five goal difference with those 13 points and Portmore United would have plus four in terms of goal difference so as the playoff if it does stay this way at the end of the season Portmore would play Cavalier who are in sixth at the moment in terms of live playoff standings and then Tivoli Gardens would play Dumby Holding those two would be a good matchup I'd love to see that one crossed inside but too close to goalkeeper Watkins who tumbles over with a save so we're coming pretty close to the water break which is normally taken midway the half and uh, Tivoli Gardens are sitting on a 1-0 advantage here against a Veer team that they are at the moment at the moment outplaying and it all comes to possession Lance Veer on the flank, Ricardo Messam has already scored twice for Veer this season. Price's header gives up a throw. And as I said before, the reason why they've been able to really shut out Veer United in the middle of the park is the possession on the ball that they've had and the reading of the pass is that they've been able to to do the intercepting a lot of passes from Veer United the free kick right toward the penalty spot and uh, the header missed there by Dennis he appeared to have got to it just didn't get a clean header off and he looks disappointed and you would have think that a taller player would have been better which is I, I think he's probably saying to Lumsden, you should have told me that you were there because right. Lumsden... He would have had a better opportunity. Yeah, yeah, but he didn't see him. I, he think he was apologetic there to say, you should, have, you should have shouted because maybe Dennis thought he was a man there in the best position, but he wasn't. Yeah, and uh, Lumsden would have loved to get that one on target as we see the indication of the first water break of the game. And avidly so. 
Yeah. You see the heat coming out of the artificial turf. It's really hot out there. Very, very hot conditions. Really, really hot conditions. It was 30 plus degrees Celsius at the start. And I would suggest that it, even if it isn't hotter than that at the moment, the players will feel hotter because <laughs> their, their body heat would have increased since the start of the match. Definitely. So very, very tough for them. So a good introduction here to have a water break. And Donovan Duke trying to speak to his 24-year-old midfield general. Dennis has a couple of goals so far this season as well, along with Messam. Ducky will need for Dennis to strike for the remaining three quarters of this match to protect the good record that they've had so far this season as the current championship leaders, Fair United. Completely unexpected if there was anyone who had said when the season started in late June that after match day nine, Veer would have been the leaders. I think a lot of people would have taken heavy, heavy bets on that or bets <laughs> against it. Uh, <laughs> uh, definitely, as you said, they were in a huge losing streak before the stoppage of last season due to COVID-19. And like I said, it's just a Sam Allardyce story all over again where Donovan Duke really takes these teams and transforms them. And not only... Did he do it with Humble Line and Mount Pleasant? He did it with Waterhouse too. Carried them directly into the final yeah. at Donovan Ducky. So no stranger to surprising a lot of people. Yeah, but a lot has changed though in the Vare uh, set up to be fair. The coach right. has changed, the the team roster has changed and Ducky's uh, having to preside over a group of players with many of them, a lot of quality and players with know-how. This man, Ricardo Campbell, as we said, was a central part of their defensive unit at Humberland back in 2016, 2017, when they were regular season champions. Missed out in the playoffs, but they had this enviable defensive record that year when they only conceded, I think, 29 goals for the entire season. 21 goals for the entire season in 33 games. The only team to have given up fewer goals in the last seven regular seasons would be Mount Pleasant, who conceded 19 goals in 2018-2019. And uh, I could mention, by the way, that Duki was also the coach of that team. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mount Pleasant. So we, 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 all, we always speak about their defensive record. And that is what Donovan Duki does. All of these teams defensively has vastly improved when he's there because that's his MO. That his, his, that's his game. So another day at the office I would say for Donovan Duki I mean just conceding 10 goals well 5 goals I well 6 goals I should say so far this season after basically 8 games so pretty good defensive record to me yeah Messam wins a free kick from the fall and Lamar Neal looks a lot more confident in the bear shirt here his free kick is threatening. Tivoli's defenders are having a difficult time getting the ball away. There was a foul there by Messam. On, I think that's Morgan. Yeah, Morgan went for it. But Messam Ooh. kicked him in the face almost. Yeah, that, he went for the ball, but that, that was reckless. That was reckless. Yeah. Morgan could have been badly hurt there. Ah. Could have been badly hurt there. Been yeah, still he down. Is, he is in pain. And then he's down on the, the, the artificial turf, which is hot. So yeah. That's a double whammy for him. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I know Messam will say he went for the ball, but it, it was a reckless challenge. And, and he could have a good case in terms of saying that he went for the ball, but mm. can't be that reckless when you're challenge it maybe a 50 50 shoulder to shoulder challenge you could do to throw off Horatio Morgan but you never want to raise your boot in, in those kind of challenges because the person nearest to the ball can be worse for wear yeah luckily for Morgan I don't think there was a lot of follow through on the foot swing I think the, the, the swing was just about stopping when it made contact with his face so it, it wasn't as bad as it could have been so I think Morgan will be in good enough shape to continue now. But 
a very, very intriguingly poised game here because Tivoli Garns are leading here, but we know Veer's ability. And uh, after the halftime break, when Duki has some words with them, there's every possibility that they can freshen themselves up for a strong second half effort and make yeah. Tivoli work even harder. I think if, if Tivoli even want to push it further, I think that man Anthony Nelson would have to be very key in, in Tivoli just compounding their lead. So if I'm Donovan Duki and I'm good defensively, as he's shown this season, I would really put a tab on Anthony Nelson because he's been everywhere in terms of running down those flanks and then he switches which makes it very hard to contain him. Tivoli on the attack with some room here. Morgan chasing toward the corner flag. Will he get to it? No, he can't. But they've won themselves a corner, I think. I'm sure if that went for a goal kick, the coach would have not been happy. He did have some options, Garnet. Yeah. It was from a corner that Tivoli had scored this time. Kadeem Davis is showing safe arms on the near post. Approaching the half-four mark. Normally does. Uh, Kadeem Davis has had multiple saves for the week for the Jamaica Premier League. So no stranger to keeping out those spectacular strikes. Followed by Pennycook. Just lost it a bit there and the stretch created some problems. Then he comes back with a good challenge. <laughs> yeah, gives up a corner, but he continues to be such a, a live wire on the defensive line here for this Tivoli Gardens team. Or now in the life table, sitting fourth in the Premier League table after starting the match in eighth place. This is what Philip Williams really wanted from this Tivoli team. Neil's corner comes right toward the penalty spot, a little beyond it. Lumsden with a throw for Veer. No, he leaves it. I tell you, Lance, Neil has not done bad in sending those deliveries into the into the 18 yard box he's done pretty well but nobody's there to meet it yeah that's the problem he's had some telling telling crosses inside the 18 yard box from dead ball situations corners crosses but nobody there to meet it yeah and that has been the problem for very united so far this game when you have a, a tall tall figures in terms of defensive pairing with adine pennycook and barrington price it's going to be very hard so maybe they would want to keep it on the ground if they want to be effective against Tivoli. But if you're intercepting passes. Tivoli 54% ball possession at the moment. Neil's pass forward is a good one. Left footed strike on goal there by Tyrese Harrison, but way off target. And he had a person to his left. He could have given it to. So there you go, the decision making as well in the final third is as you see, the, the the player just putting up his hands in disbelief. You know, he, he had a player to his left, and that man, Harrison, really, really would have to... Yeah, I think it was Plummer coming on the left side there to present him with a, a, a pass offering. And as, as again, you, you see persons, players from Tivoli Gardens, and this comes attributes to the heat. Normally, during the course of the game, they would spray the the boots with cold water because it's so hot out there yeah. and they're running up and down but sometimes you always talk about the players especially the goalkeeper goalkeeper has to stand up one place in this heat so most times when water comes onto the boots is the keeper that normally is yeah. the man but really and truly and it's 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 also partly due to the material of these new fashion boots right that that attract the heat and almost you know 
multiply the heat level that you're facing with you in your in your in your feet right. inside those boots and the turf itself very very hot price the experienced tivoli gardens captain at central defense from time to time gets goals from set pieces coming up on the front end no goals for him recently in the Premier League. Nelson just down on the field now for Tivoli Gardens and Lums then the man it seems that clattered with him, yes. Yeah, another situation there when he wouldn't have been prepared for the challenge and Lums then was very aggressive coming from behind. Less than 12 minutes to the halftime break and Tivoli Gardens are sitting on a, an advantage here by one goal to nil from the Roshane Thompson strike. Has them currently fourth in the live table behind a very united Mount Pleasant and Portmore United. Same number of points with Portmore United and Don Beholden at the moment, Tivoli Gardens. Superior to Don Beholden's goal difference but inferior to Portmore, Portmore United's goal difference. Currently they're on plus two, Portmore United plus four, but both are on 13 points as it stands. That man Dever Gray would certainly want to add a fourth to the season. Anthony Nelson just waiting to score his first goal of the Jamaica Premier League would want to do that. He has assisted the first goal. Yeah, goes pass a little bit short, but typically recovering well. They're on the attack on the right side with Thompson, the goal scorer. Lewis hustles him off the ball. Throw one by Tivoli. Yeah, miscommunication between Lewis and Plummer to get themselves out of trouble. Kimar Flemings with a throw. And seen seen that much of him since the start of this game. Fall, free kick to fear. I thought Dennis was fouled, but the foul call apparently came against Lamar Neal. Bars the man challenging aggressively there in midfield for Tivoli. Stripped up by Neal somewhat, but a referee, no call. And then the foul. But like I said, Bowers. The first couple of games, Lance, did not start for Tivoli, but has really come into the starting lineup for the Kingston based team. Yeah, great work in midfield from him just then. Slides into the box bars there. And the whistle goes, free kick to Veer inside their own box. But Veer having difficulty here at the moment trying to contain. A Tivoli Gardens team that's not only playing with a lot of confidence but a lot of aggression and and assertiveness. Dennis trying to work his way forward, but a cluster of Tivoli Gardens defensive line setting up there behind him. Gray. Good skill by Gray. Good pass as well. Tivoli on the attack. Four against four at the moment. Yeah, Gray crashed into by Brown. And a free kick one here by Tivoli Garns, just about 23 yards out on the right channel. Gray looking threatening there as he went toward the 18 yard area. And Brown decides to stop him. Yeah, just got the wind knocked out of him. Gray and uh, you can see why the referee called that there's no way that Brown could have necessarily gotten out of that he turned and stuck his elbow out a little bit and just stopped the very Gray's run smart by, by, by the midfielder but has really given Tivoli Gardens another opportunity to double their advantage yeah, Kimar Flemings is a man who's gonna strike this 
Several two minute shirts in the box waiting for scoring opportunities. Good cross. Headed away there. Powerfully. The danger still on. Tivoli looking for number two. And uh, Gray thought was aiming for the far post. Unsuccessful on that occasion. Dennis for Veer. Poor pass. Quick transition for Veer, but Dennis's touch needed to be a little bit better. And now Dennis Davis, Kadeem Davis, the Veer goalkeeper, has gone down. And we think for the same problem with yeah. the heat inside the boots. Yes. And he'll need some cold water now to avert that discomfort. Oh, I'm telling you, it will be such a relief when that water touches his feet, to be honest, and in the boots again. But, I mean, this is what Tivoli wants. This is what Tivoli wants for, for their players in terms of... This is what Philip Williams, Coach Philip Williams, wants. They want them to pressure those defenders. They want them to constantly put them under pressure, and that, that's the reason. You know, they, they wanted a car there, but it hit the very United players square in the face. Yeah, when Gray played that ball, I thought he was looking for someone on the far post, but maybe he was going for the far post himself, just that he didn't hit it with power. So because he didn't go for power, it made me feel as if he was looking for the pass, but maybe he was angling it to the far post, only he would know at the moment. Yeah, he. I, I think if he was going for goal, he was looking for placement and not necessarily power, but Philip Williams really really egging his team on and Donovan Duki as well a very vocal coach so he would give them certainly a motivational talk during halftime he has the motivation of Jurgen Klopp and the coaching tactics of Jose Mourinho <laughs> Donovan Duki the last time before now that Duki coached the Clarendon team they as we said, we're regular season champions and boasted the best defensive record in the league. That was back in the 2016-2017 campaign when, campaign when he coached Humbleland. Deja vu. Yeah, so he's back in Clarendon and back in the top flight. And back in first place as well. It was just like Humbleland. Nobody necessarily expected them to become regular season champions, but they did. Got a bye to the semi-finals for the playoffs, Humble Lion, and it seems as if Very United would be doing that as well. But this is how close they are. They're just one point. If it stands now, with just one point ahead of Tivoli Gardens, who are on 13. And before this game, Lance, it was just two points separating first from eighth position. Yeah. Pretty tight going. Oh, Whistle yeah. from referee Nemard again. Free kick to Veer inside their own box. Devroy Gray going up for that one. Lewis has it for Veer. Blocked. There goes Devoy Gray. Oh, great work here from Great on the right flank. Two against two at the moment. And here comes Garnet, who went on to try to strike that one, but great challenge there. And uh, Fears solid defensive line coming up well for them on that occasion but it did look threatening as Greg charged down the right side cut inside there and looked threatening this man definitely a good challenge by the captain Campbell would have been all sorts of trouble don't really want to get back into this one at least before half time but it's going to be difficult it's not far from half time now yeah Ricardo Campbell missed one game so far this season because of an injury. Uh, that was the early August match against Dunbar Holden. 
which they lost, by the way. Right. They haven't lost any games with Ricardo Campbell playing. But if uh, the score remains as it is now, they would have lost the game with him playing. Neil. Oh, great pass forward there, and Dennis gets away. Pennycook, though, puts pressure on. Wow, Dennis goes for... I would think that's it. I would, I would have hoped that was a pass to the onrushing Brown, I think, who was charging forward. Great pass there from Lamar Neal. Just Dennis glancing across there. He would have seen Javier Brown coming up to the far post and maybe tried to give him, but the goalkeeper got in the way. Watkins doing well. Harrison down with an injury for fear. Or yeah, no. maybe hot boots. No, it seems as if it's its ankle again, or maybe both his hot boots and ankle, but Van Duke, very calm. Not known to be a calm person, that Van Duke. Yeah. Especially but when his team is... Yeah, you, you mentioned their 2016-2017 campaign with Humbland when they were regular season champions, but then lost out in the playoffs. Right. He was complaining on that occasion because of the format of the, of the competition. After they had already qualified automatically, he... he he, his team was off for two to three weeks and didn't play while the other teams going through the first phase of the playoffs were active and then his team lost in the first stage of the playoffs and he suggested then that it was a difficult period for him because his team was missing valuable match practice right. in pretty much the same way that they haven't had much match practice in the past three weeks because of the bye and then the weekend cancellation because of the storm so they are looking there at the moment a little behind the eight ball and a little off the sort of form that they were showing three or four weeks ago and um, I'm pretty certain that coach Dookie is choking that up to the absence of proper preparation and match play for the past three weeks <laughs> you know what I, 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 I think too <laughs> that based on his experience with Humberland when they were regular season champions and then had to sit and wait for the playoffs to be completed Maybe he doesn't want to make the top two this year because that would mean sitting down and watching other teams come, <laughs> come to the playoffs. Maybe he wants to, to get third so he can keep his team busy. Well, a conspiracy theory here because when I was doing the, that, that interview with him and I asked him about automatic qualification. Typically on the advance here, they are taking care of business. When I, when I did ask him about the, the automatic qualification, he didn't answer it directly. So... Maybe, maybe that maybe that's the point, but I, I guess prob because Donovan Dickey does not mind playing um, playing the games. He he doesn't, and and I think that was what he's talking about. You know, you know, going through the motion for a couple of weeks, you're off, you're not able to play any games. Maybe match fitness is a problem for him because you'd have to play both legs of the playoffs between third and sixth place. So. That, I think, is, is, is what his complaint was for, for Humble Line. And maybe if they do automatically qualify, maybe that's a complaint he'll have again. Yeah. Here's Messam down the left flank. His cross blocked. And three minutes added on for stoppages here at the first half. End. And we're about to see one of those three minutes expire. Not necessarily a lot to garner more minutes. Yeah. Did have some stoppage for the water and the boots. I know Harrison twice was looked at for his ankle. Lamar Neal has looked so good in midfield here for Veer. Looks a completely different player from his years at Arnett Gardens where I guess he was surrounded by a lot of big name you know, community star players that he probably didn't have the the confidence and played with the same assurance that we're seeing him play with now. He he looks like a team leader at the moment. Even though he had some good games for Arnett Garns, I remember a few that he did. He never ever looked like a team leader and, and quite often played coming off the bench. But at the moment in midfield, he's looking creative. He's playing with vision. He's playing with a lot of assurance, Lamar Neal, and um, is, is definitely one of the top players in this fair setup at the moment. Morgan yeah. tackled successfully by Brown. Lumsden now has it. Here comes Neil. Yeah, Lamar Neil had the likes of, you know, Marvin Morgan, had the likes of, you know, Kemal Malcolm that is there. 
that normally is in that wide midfield Fishnal position. Harris. Fishnal Harris as well. So he had a lot of those players that were really in and around that were that were the star players for for Arnett Garden. So he wasn't able to shine necessarily. But coming into this very United setup, he has been so good in terms of dead ball speciality, in terms of controlling the middle of the park, which is also something that people underrate very United for. And that's why they were able to score nine goals this season. Their midfield has been really, really good, as well as their defense. They're able to make that connection between the defense and the middle of the park. And Lamar Neal is the all-important middleman that connects that defensive line with that midfield. So that has been the, the difference maker, totally. Flemings to Gray. Gray has it with room. Bars. A little bit short there to Morgan, but Morgan's pass isn't good either, and Lums then takes it. <laughs> Campbell crashes there. <laughs> yeah, a whistle from referee Nemard, who has a strong word with Campbell for that challenge, and at the same time, the halftime whistle goes. But a very um, crunching end there to the half with <laughs> Romain Plummer. Uh, getting a savage challenge from behind by Campbell. So at halftime, Tivoli Gardens are leading their Ver Ver team by one goal to nil. And the strike from Roshane Thompson, the difference between these two teams at the moment. But a very, very good first half here for this Tivoli Gardens team. From the very outset, they looked purposeful and looked urgent. at the UWI JFF Captain Horace Burrell Center of Excellence for Jamaica Premier League football powered by Digicel and the Tivoli Gardens are leading on this Roshin Thompson goal by one goal to nil of Overveer at half time in this fixture and here they are two seasons later after the 2019-2020 season was aborted because of COVID-19 Tivoli starting off where they left off Garnet challenging Plummer for Veer. Yeah, he's fouled. Yeah, got an injury right at the end of the first half. Plummer did. May have gotten some attention to that in the break. Yeah, I think it was Fleming's coming for him there with a the late challenge and just clipping his heels. So Veer with a free kick. We're over on the left channel. They want to put some players in numbers with white shirts now going up, looking for the equalizing goal. Ricardo Campbell. He's the man that's going to strike it. Alton Lewis goes back in central defense to cover where the big man has left. And Watkins looks attentive in goal for Tivoli Gardens. Campbell's free kick searching toward the far post. Oh, was not a bad effort on goal there by Dennis. Appealing for a handball. Oh, it crashed in one of the Tivoli defenders. But he hit that one pretty sweetly, didn't it? Campbell. Lewis. Two fair players and the Tivoli defender missing that one. Behind for a goal kick. Now very United would have to be focused as it pertains to not losing. This would be only their second loss of the season. And uh, actually both teams have only lost once for the season. Of course, Tivoli Gardens getting four 
four drawn results and two victories. With only one loss. That loss coming against Portmore United by three goals to one. Certainly that man, Jermaine Teddy Johnson, would want to come on and make an impact and further extend his lead. But I'm certain that they would want to continue. Philip Williams would want to have Tivoli continue what they've been doing. Just plug the middle of the park, intercept those passes from Vere United and get forward into dangerous positions. And Vere United will want to calm things down. They have to stay focused now. It's the second 45. And uh, they would want to, to get a goal here maybe early so they can set things off for an interesting game and maybe grab three points. Boris goes forward to Gray. The return pass asking Gray to do a little bit too much. The whistle from referee Nemhard is there as well. Defroy Gray, three goals already this season. No player on the field has scored more goals than he has this season, Devroy Gray. He's been on point for Tivoli Garn so far this season. Scored against Arnett. Also struck in the 1-1 draw against Waterhouse. And scored in their draw against Tip against Cavalier as well. He knows how to make an impact of Gray when his team is trailing, what he's going to be able to do now that his team is leading. Yeah, Harrison fouls Pinnacle free kick to Tivoli. Yeah, Harrison, the teenager, very, very busy here. Struck one of the goals that beat Harbour BY three goals to two in late July. Match day five or six it was. At that point in the season, Bear were undefeated. All right. And there, Campbell apparently struck in the face there. Yeah, here's what happened. Yeah, the right arm of Gray just flashing into Ricardo Campbell's face. And he's a tough 34 year old. He'll shrug that off and get back to business. Seems to be a substitution. Yeah, Vera is gonna Mesam. Make a change here. Mesam, who's been largely ineffective. Andre Gale is now on for him. Yeah, Gale's late goal. Completed a 3-1 win for Vera over Humberland in mid-July. And he now gets some playing time again. And Ricardo Messam is off, so there's Andre Gale. Former schoolboy standout player with Garth Maceo in the Da Costa Cup. 21 years old now. And Darwin Ducky expecting a rebound from his team. They trail. And we're in the 52nd minute. Garnet. Yeah, Plummer coming back with the recovery challenge. But commits a foul. And it seems to me like a lot of times in this in this second half is that the recovery rate of Vere United is quite late. I'm not I'm not sure why is that because normally they're they're quick to the draw in terms of when they lose possession Vere United and that's their second time in a few minutes that they've clipped somebody from behind. Dean Pennycook was the first offense and now Rasheen Thompson so they'd have to get better at 
recovering and that is one of the reasons why Tivoli Gardens are ahead. They lose possession, they quickly try to get it back, especially in the middle of the park and that's been the difference for Tivoli. That's why they've played so well against the very United today, especially in the first half. And, and that's one of the reasons there. Yeah. Dennis Fouls. Nelson. Free kick for Tivoli now. Lumsden's header is not effective. Pressure still here on the Veer team. Effort way over the top. then with a long pass over onto the right side good quick challenge there coming from Horatio Morgan just stifles the Vera advance Price taking care of business and uh, Tivoli early in the second half here just measuring their performance at the moment not wanting to extend or expend too much energy because they, they can manage the game from this possession, from this position. A victory here for Tivoli, far more important for them than it is for Veer, because Veer, even if they lose here, they will still be leaders at the end of this game of the Premier League table. But a win or a loss here for Tivoli at the moment means the difference between being in a playoff spot and not being in a playoff spot. So Tivoli having a lot more to play for in this fixture. Yeah, definitely. Tivoli Gardens out of the play, play the playoffs, just two points off that playoff spot. Entering the game. Right, entering the game, and now they're th they're fourth. Morgan appears to want to set the ball onto his right foot to get the cross. There's the goal scorer Thompson. Yeah, just took his eyes off the ball just now and lost it and. Fear are on the counter-attack. Neil. Plummer. Dennis wants the ball. Yeah, Plummer keeps it too long and loses it. On the counter now. Tivoli. Yeah, but Campbell very, very easily takes the ball away from Nelson. So the ball just left Anton Nelson. Yeah, we've got to look at the fixtures ahead for these two teams as oh, well because yeah. Tivoli Gardens have a seemingly easier run towards the end of the group stage. Sneaking in there. Yeah, Tivoli Garn's remaining games are Humberland and, and Malines, who are pretty much off the pace for playoff spots. But for the fair team, they've got a tougher schedule going in. Yeah, definitely. They have Mount Pleasant and Cavalier, who are in playoff position. Mount Pleasant on the same amount of points as Vere United heading into this game. And if it stays like this, they would have the same amount of points. So, so it's going to be very, very interesting couple of weeks left here in the Jamaica Premier League powered by Digicel. Yeah. And you would think that Tivoli Gardens may have an advantage there. So if they do get those victories in the last two games, which is the Humble Lion and Malines United, then you're looking at 19 points for, for Tivoli Gardens and possibly an automatic qualifying spot as we see another substitution. It seems to be Bowles that will be making his way off the field. And the man that 
has been such a, a driving force in the attack for Tivoli. Jermaine Teddy Johnson will be making his way, lads. Yeah, Jermaine Johnson, 41 years old now. <laughs> uh, 73 caps for Jamaica in international football. Had a pretty lengthy stint in England playing for Sheffield Wednesday. 231 caps for Sheffield Wednesday. Also had brief stints with Bradford City, Bolton and Oldham. And um, back to Jamaica in the past three or four years to impart his knowledge and skill. He has said that his dream job is to go back to England and coach Sheffield Wednesday. Mm. Not a bad dream to have, Lance. Neil, still Neil, under some pressure, Neil has no room to shoot, forced all the way over to the right side of the 18-yard box, and now crashes into the Sportsmax advertising frame. <laughs> there you have it. I, I hope Sportsmax didn't hurt him. <laughs> well, we have been praising him all, all day in this commentary booth, but that is the, the defense of Tivoli Gardens. You see where they didn't give him any room to shoot. Campbell and Garnet was just hounding him, closing down the spaces, and not only did he give him no room to shoot, but no room to pass the ball either. Yeah. So that was very good defensively by Garnett and Campbell. Yeah, he would have been engaged in some big derby matches while he played for Arnett Garns against Tivoli. So he knows about the Tivoli challenge. <laughs> Johnson gets his first touch off the ball. Passes wide to Morgan, wants the ball back and gets it. Morgan and Nelson over on the left. The cross dangerous. And uh, Davis has to make a very, very alert and assertive save in the six-yard box. Uh, that was dangerous from Tivoli Gardens. Jeremy and Teddy Johnson getting involved in the action here. One touch pass to Horatia Morgan. Horatia Morgan saw the man on his left and one touch pass. And that wasn't a... Bad ball into DeVroy Gray, but the command of Kadeem Davis inside yeah. his 18-yard box, more specifically, his six-yard box, that was the difference. Yeah, very, very alert work there by Kadeem Davis. No stranger to, to those yeah. assertiveness. On, yeah, on performance, without question, one right. of the best goalkeepers in the league at the moment. Definitely. And, and that's one of the reasons why, as we see, it seems to be Anthony Nelson. He has that problem with his... His right foot, it seems to be his, his, his ankle that he has had a problem with. He's limping off the field. That's not a good sign for, for Tivoli Gardens. We'd want him who has been a menace on the, on the flank. He switched wings a, a couple of times, but really caused a lot of problems for the wing backs over the, over the course of their four match and beaten run. Yeah, and it was his assist that set up the Roshan Thompson bullet like goal yeah. in the first half. Very very good awareness from Anthony Nelson to lay it off for Rasheen Thompson to score that goal for Tivoli Gardens. Yeah, Johnson playing there to Flemings. Flemings long ball into the box and a foul. I think I think Gray was probably guilty there of grabbing onto the defender's arm or shoulder and he's penalized for it. Doesn't like the call from referee Nemhard though, so he's making it known. Well, argue as he might, that man is just staying resolute in his decision. Veer with a quick counter attack. But with a throw here deep inside the Tivoli half. We're past the hour mark. Lebar Neal to Javier Brown to Lewis. His pass is poor Lewis is. And Flemings gets by him. Plummer, good recovery. Davis forced to come out of his 18 yard area and power the ball away right footed. Yeah, there's a, a, a bit of a tameness in this beer performance at the moment. There's Kimar Flemings, very experienced defender for Tivoli Gardens. Uh, 34 years old, had three or four consecutive seasons with UWI before returning to Tivoli. Tivoli Gardens back line, very experienced. Shabar Campbell on the other flank, defensive flank, is 33 years old. 
Oh, there's a 28-year-old Price <laughs> crashing into young Harrison and arguing with the referee. Man, Barrington Price with a, he's a big guy. And Harrison was never going to win that 50-50 battle, I can tell you that. Yeah. With Barrington Price, the captain for Tivoli Gardens, who has yeah. been a rock at the back with 24-year-old Adine Pennycook. Yeah, and, and, and to be fair, since the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen a lot of these players probably 10 or 15 pounds heavier than, than pre-COVID-19. <laughs> Campbell, a lot more burly than he was two seasons ago. Um, he may argue that it's that it's muscle, but it does look a little heavy around the waist. But <laughs> he's agile, he's efficient, and his increased weight makes things even more difficult for opposing forward, forward players. Uh, well, not just his weight has increased, uh, cer certainly is here as, as well. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Garnet with a header out. Has played reasonably well today, Garnet. Another player who is well travelled. Did have a short stint at Jamalco as well, Garnet, and was at Boystone as well. So there you have two players playing for Tivoli Gardens that were formerly of Vir United, was formerly named Jamalco. And uh, one of them is on the floor as, as we speak, the very grey. Yeah. But Garnet has been so important for the Valley Gardens in the middle of the park today. Yeah. So, Devroy Gray just moving across. <clears throat> I mean, Andre Smith. He was the replacement for Andre Smith. Garnet got a red card a few matches ago and. And Tevin Garnett has since been a namestay along with Romain Bowers. So this season has produced a lot of persons coming off the bench and staying in that no, in that in that starting eleven role. Yeah. And two players are from Tivoli, Romain Bowers and, and Tevin Garnett. Yeah, I mean, just sends the ball forward there, but uh foul committed there. It's now snuck in. Yeah, Shamar Connor has come on for the Veer team. Committing a foul there on Nelson, who has been the, in a few wars so far in this match, has come out with some blows. Yeah, and that's this time it's the left leg. It was the right leg that was giving him some trouble, Nelson, throughout this game. But the left leg is now the one that ha that's giving him some problems. And again, you wouldn't want to lose this type of player. Anthony Nelson did set up Rasheen Thompson. That was his second assist of the season, Anthony Nelson. And again, for the second time, the, the stretcher was out and they had to send it back. But that is the difference. Early in the second half, in for early in the first half, and that was a beautiful strike from Rasheen Thompson. No mistake. Saw that he was open, laid it off, and bang with his right foot straight into the back of the net. Kadim Davis couldn't do anything. That was a, a rocket of a shot from Rasheen Thompson, and that has been the difference so far. And he's another player that normally is a substitute yeah. and has come on and has been the difference maker in the starting 11. Yeah. So first, first Premier League season with Shane Thompson. Right. So you see a flurry of them as former Kingston College man, the man that came on, Trayvon Reed, did score in that Manning Cup final. Reed getting his first start this season. Yeah. First time on the roster overall as well. Yeah, Trayvon Reed, no stranger to big moments, did score in that final in 2018, the Manning Cup, where it was the battle of North Street between Kingston College, between Kingston College and St George's College, did score the first goal, I believe, in that game for Kingston College, and we know what result that was. But Trayvon Reed, a very skillful player, 
has put on a few pounds, so you're right about that COVID situation. Has put on a few pounds, Trayvon Reed, but very skillful and very quick is Trayvon Reed. Normally plays on the wing, but can play down the middle. Yeah, Fleming's just sitting there as a one-man wall at the moment. The cross from Neil. Yeah, and Dennis hits wide of the target. Was it Dennis? It, I think it was Plummer that hit that one on. But I think Dennis was at the back post. Waiting for it. Waiting for it and couldn't latch on to it. That was a very good ball. And I have constantly, and it is, I have constantly talked about Lamar Neal. And it, it's off of a, a Tivoli Gardens player. Yeah, it does appear to came of a Tivoli player. Yeah, but Plummer and... I think Plummer and Campbell went up for the ball and right. the last touch may have come from Campbell. Yeah, it, it, it's from Shavar Campbell. And the it's, assistant. This is a water break now, I think, anyway, is it? Yeah, it is It is the second water break. And yeah, but that was a, 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 a promising moment for Veer. And again, Lamar Neal from the set play. Very, very threatening cross inside the box and had the Tivoli defenders scrambling to get the ball away. There is Trayvon Reed who has replaced Anthony Nelson and a very skillful player very good with the ball at his feet and very good at taking on defenders. Let's see what impact he'll have for the last quarter of this match. Well certainly certainly the, the skillful player that we saw at Kingston College you'd want to see him come out here and play against the very United would want to keep that pressure on that very United defence with Lumsden and Campbell. But they would want to, to cushion this victory. Just one goal in it. Still have some minutes left, Lance, and very United can snatch a point or maybe all three. So the Tivoli Gardens wouldn't want to lose their shape because if they do and bring the midfield of very United into the game then that will spell problem for him so as it stands just one point between first and fifth, and fifth. yeah Tivoli Gardens starting the day on eighth in eighth position on 10 points there they are now up three points to to fourth in the table on 13 points Portmore also with 13 but with a superior goal difference Mount Pleasant and Veer top of the table on 14 points Veer with a better goal difference over the Mount Pleasant team at the moment that is the live table as we speak but that can change because we still have 20 minutes left in the match there's Jeremy Teddy Johnson on as a second half substitute and was, has already had a few good neat clinical touches on the ball yeah, his first couple of touches on the ball in the middle of the park when he just came on really set up Horatio Morgan to send that one inside for a, for a very dangerous ball from Tivoli Garden. So I'm, I'm not sure as to why it's a, it's a goal kick. It should have been a corner after the water break, but the referee says, referee seems as though he didn't see that Shavar Campbell was the last person that it that ball hit off of. But it's a very United half possession now. Yeah, Plummer trying to steer the ball inside, but Garnett again cutting off the ball in holding midfield. Veer threatening. Price with the header out. Reed. Thompson goes wide. Gray glances over his shoulder. He sees the powerful Ricardo Campbell standing in his way. Johnson. Oh, neat pass from Johnson, but very, very well read there by the Veer defender. Lumps then goes wide. Plummer, Neil. And for Veer United to really get back into this game with less than 20 minutes to go, they would need Plummer and Dennis to be more involved and more effective in this game. In terms of attacking wise, those two have been the the brightest light for Veer United going forward, scoring some goals and Messam as well. But Messam is off the field, so Plummer and Plum, they would both have to be involved. Lamar Neal cannot do it on his own. He's in the middle of the park. He's the one orchestrating the passes. But for someone to put the ball into the back of the net, Dennis and Plummer will have to be those persons. Can't be Neal alone. Gray. Reed. Johnson. Oh, still Johnson. Still Johnson. Johnson! Straight to goalkeeper Davis, but Teddy Johnson just floating through a cluster of Veer 
challenges there as if they didn't exist. And that is why they won, still won Jeremy and Teddy Johnson in this setup. Saw that there was a little bit of opening. Probably should have gone for more power and placement, but that was tricky there by Jeremy and Teddy Johnson. Foul on Plummer. I think from Garnet. Free kick to Veer. So the intensity of the game increases here as Veer steps up the challenge and uh, Tivoli are intent on keeping the lead they have, especially with a couple of fresh legs on now. Lamar Neal. Johnson held on to there by Brown. Free kick to Tivoli. Top of their own half. Johnson just showing that he still has those agile feet. May not have the speed, but... Oh, delightful pass forward there. Morgan getting there, but under some pressure. Sets the ball back for Gray, whose left-footed strike is blocked by Lumsden. Campbell. Neil gets in the way. I think Campbell should have turned more to his, his left. He had options in the middle of the park. Timothy Gardens really putting some pressure on Very United. Yeah, the pass intended there for Neil, but didn't quite get to him. Now Gray. Reed. Morgan. Wasted play there for Tivoli because the cross was feeble. And straight to goalkeeper Davis. And most of the players that were there for Tivoli Gardens were behind the play, so Arisha Morgan couldn't have had somebody to meet that one. Gray across there to Reed, who allows Morgan to go right for it, but Morgan's effort is tame. Davis has the ease of taking goal. And Harisha Morgan, for most of the second half, has not had the best decision making plays for Tivoli Gardens. Will have to be better than that. If they really want to, to pile on the score, it's only one goal in it, Lance. And thinking a, a certain play can really turn this game on its head. Yeah, play there. Well read by Lewis. Now Dennis has it. Yeah, his pass not good. Good passing here from Tivoli Gardens. Morgan, oh now he gives the ball away and Dennis looks urgent in midfield now for Veer. Price to Garnett to Flemings. So Tivoli moving from defence upfield with quality. Morgan under pressure, gets assistance from Johnson. Now Reed, Gray on the left flank. Gray wins a corner. I think he has. I think what minutes left. I think what has been so so effective for Tivoli Gardens is that one player in the midfield and the forward line is not in one place. Devroy Gray normally is the centre forward in the starting lineup, but goes wide, left or right. We see Trayvon Reed dropping back more into the middle of the park. He's normally a wing up front. Horatia Morgan sometimes comes in. So there's constant movement with this midfield and attacking line for Tivoli Gardens, and that's why it has been so difficult for Veer. Corner kick, over hit. And a throw one here by Veer deep inside their own half. Yeah, too much power there on the corner coming from Trayvon Reed. And they would have loved a Lamar Neal quality type player to, to send that ball inside. Kevoli to Garnet. Johnson. Flemings. Tivoli playing with confidence. Gray commits a foul. Free kick one for Fear. Fear playing with a lot more urgency now. You see, even when they are restarting the game, they are moving very quickly because. They are anxious to recover from the deficit they have found themselves in from the seventh minute through the Roshane Thompson strike.
just 13 minutes left in normal time plus time to be added on for stoppages and Watkins is being a little cheeky here <laughs> now he falls again <laughs> as if he was hit by a train <laughs> which Lamar <laughs> Neal is not <laughs> and Duki is not amused of course Donovan Duki no stranger to being vocal with those things but he would want his team to just get that all important goal Johnson takes the return play good build up here from Tivoli Lumsden gets in the way of the cross and that's exactly what I'm talking about Lance Jermaine Teddy Johnson not the quickest but you saw him drifting wide in that left midfield left wing type position so that is what has been their effective strategy no stagnant play movement one position to another who is in the midfield goes wide who's wide comes back in the middle of the park and it seems like Rashane Thompson will be coming off the goal scorer for Tivoli Gardens well he's done the most important thing in the match so far and we just saw it and it seems to be like Satchwell will be coming on yes it's Tasha Satchwell Another fairly well traveled player did spend some time with Arnett Garns as well, and a brief period too with Waterhouse. Former schoolboy standout at Clarendon College, Dasha Satchel. 11 minutes left in normal time, plus time to be added on stoppages, which these days end up to be quite some time because of the water breaks and the. Um, hot boots and injuries and also yeah that 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 is also another thing with the artificial turf in terms of stamping your studs into the ground so you can have a better placement in terms of running and 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 you know switching plays passing and stuff like that you know it's it's telling on the ankle yeah Campbell does really well here gets by Brown Morgan Reed Satchel and floats this ball forward I think he was looking there for Morgan but it was over hit badly over hit too shouldn't have done that he should have played it on the ground you know floating that ball for Morgan with two taller players he does fancy himself as a long ball passer, right. which when he's on, he's brilliant. But the thing with players who use the long ball as their primary um, tool on the field is that when, when they're off, they look, they look bad because the ball just keeps spraying away to uh, missing the targets. So uh, the long ball proficiency players need, need to be on point because if they aren't, it's... it's just gives the impression that they're wasting the ball yeah and, and this is where the diversity comes in Lance as it pertains to what what is the decision that you're gonna make because you have to at times even though you're a long long ball specialist you have to at times play it on the ground because if they realize that that is what you're doing they're just gonna cover the spaces for the players to not run into when you're delivering that long ball price intercepts here for Tivoli Morgan Johnson, Reed, good snappy short passing here from Tivoli. Uh, Johnson's pass forward there, missing the target. And uh, Tivoli playing at the moment with, with the confidence of a winning team. There's time still for Veer to get back into the game, but they've got to start to do some things differently now because Tivoli are playing with assurance. Brown, searching. Too much of a chase there for Plummer, who's over on the right side now, and that was too much for him. Yeah, and th this is what you this is what you you look at. If somebody who doesn't know who is on top in the Jamaica Premier League, Paul by Digicel, based on this, you would have thought that Tivoli Gardens 
were the ones that were leading the table. They are confident from defense to attack the midfield. is intercepting a lot of passes for, for Very United. And they've dealt with the final third passes pretty well. The best, this, the best opportunity for Very United came just before the second water break with that Hena by Plummer. So they've dealt with it pretty well with Barrington Price and Adine Pennycook. And they've bossed the middle of the park. And the attacking line has been very, very menacing and very effective going forward. And they got to go for their troubles early on in the game. Yeah. They were very business-like from the, from the opening whistle, this uh, Tivoli Gardens right. team. It was very, very evident that they came here to win today. And their Roshain Thompson goal in the seventh minute, still with less than seven minutes remaining in the game now, remains the most important moment of the match so far. Johnson. Yeah, definitely. Good, quick challenge there from Ricardo Campbell. They're snuffing out the 41-year-old as he tried to go forward. O'Connor oh. does well. Dennis. Beautifully read there by Pennycook, who is again in the conversation for another MVP honor here and another tidy performance here from Tivoli Gardens. Defensively, he has been so magnificent in this game. And that's why he has had two MVP, MVP trophies this season. Two matches he has um, gotten that MVP trophy. That's the reason why. One-on-one -on -one is very difficult to get past him. And those aerial deliveries, it's not easy for somebody to latch onto it, especially if they're the same height or shorter. Yeah. So he's been phenomenal in defense for them. You wonder why there were so many years that he was absent from, absent from the Premier League after playing for Rivoli from 2014 to 2016. Two seasons, 2014, 2015, and 2015, 2016, but hasn't returned to the Premier League until now. Odin Pennycook. And you wonder why... And, and based on his performance for Tivoli in defense, you say, where have you been all this time? You know, it's been a very good season for Dean Pennycook. Yeah, even if he was playing like in parish competitions and so on, you would think that with his quality, some, some Premier League team would have offered him some contract. Well, a Premier League team has. <laughs> well, Tivoli no. Gardens <laughs> has offered him and he has not done bad for them at all. That defensive work by Pennycook has been the difference maker for them yeah. losing and winning a game or drawing and losing a game. I know the Tivoli effort today has been good all round from a team effort. Defense, midfield and the attackers have been persistent. But I can't think of a player who, if I was scoring out of one out of ten, ten being the highest, that I would put higher than Odin Pennycook. I mean, there, there are players that have been effective. Anthony Nelson was good in this game today, um, was effective on the flank, got an assist, Roshin Thompson getting a goal. But Adin Pennycook has been such a rock at the back, even when Barrington Price moves out. And he's also a very versatile defender. Can move the ball effectively out from the defence by some distance to the centre circle and gives it to the midfielders. So Adin Pennycook has been phenomenal for, for Tivoli Gardens in the defence. And that's why they have one of the best defensive records in the league. Yeah. Tivoli now with about six unanswered passes. Now the answer comes in the form of Javier Brown who wins it. And uh, there with a throw midway there. The Tivoli half. Here's Lewis with the ball now. Time running out on Vare, the championship leaders at the moment. Dennis. The ball set back here. Robbed off the boot of Dennis by Devroy Gray who does really well. Certainly, if this game was still locked at 1 1, or if they were leading, I would suggest that Lamar Neal would be in the conversation for the match MVP. But it is it's, it's not customary for the MVP to come from a losing team, which Vare is at the moment. Right. Uh, because Lamar Neal has been effective for Vare United in that middle of the park. But there's just nobody to meet any of the deliveries for Lamar Neal. Of course, formerly of Arnick Gardens, where most of us knew him playing at. But Lamar Neal has not had anybody really there to meet anything. Tavis Grant now in for Veer, replaces Alton Lewis. Just over five minutes now remaining in the game, or just less than five minutes. Time to be added on for stoppages. So Veer making a couple of late changes here. Tashane Campbell now on as well in place of Javier Brown. Corner 
break here to Fear. Chance is running out for them. Oh, Watkins gets a vital touch onto that ball. Because Cousins, the substitute, was creeping in on the back post. It was actually two players on the back post that was creeping. So he had to touch that one out for another corner. As we see again, see two. Yeah. There were two players, and it seems to be also Tavis Grant as well. So some late pressure here being exerted by Veer, looking for a, an equalizer. Time running out. Watkins looks to have hurt himself as well. Yeah, it seems to be a collision between him and a defender. But we talk about not having speed. He still has some some speed on him, Jeremy and Teddy Johnson. Yeah, does really well down the left flank there. Reed, Johnson, Morgan, Satchel. Flemings wants it on the right side and gets it. Garnet comes in support. But the pass goes forward here to Devroy Gray, who is under some pressure. Those two, especially the man Flemings on the right, the right back for Tivoli Gardens has done some good work for Tivoli this season. Has a goal for his troubles from, a pen, from the penalty spot. Almost did not get that one registered because the team keeper did have a hand to that one. But yeah, Watkins is now down and is going to get some attention. Yeah, I remember Watkins had to basically buy his time twice this season because he did get a red card and uh, Nicholas Clark did come in to replace him. And then for, for maybe two or three games, even when he came off of his suspension, Clark was still in goal. And then Clark got injured. And then that's how Watkins got back as the, the resident keeper for Tivoli Gardens. So, yeah, here's where we think Watkins got himself hurt. He punched the ball away here, denying the two men, Grant and Solomon on the back end. And a second. So this in the space of probably 30 seconds or so with some vital touches on the ball and hurt in, in the process. I'm told as many as seven minutes will be added on here for stoppages. So, a lot of time for Veer United to even snatch three points. It's not out of the woods yet. If they do continue to pressure them, they can get two quick goals in quick succession, but they really have to work hard to at least get that goal early in the stoppage time. Maybe after two minutes, they would have to be 1-1 with Tivoli. Ball crossed inside here and headed out. By Morgan, I thought, got Neil with a strike from distance. Probably a foot and a half over the crossbar, but certainly caught Watkins' attention there. Uh, definitely. Watkins had to see that one through. If it had the right height, and it was just traveling upwards as the ball continued to go closer and closer to the goal. So if the height just stayed initially where he initially struck the ball, it would have been problems for Kiwan Watkins. So Tivoli have to be careful. They have to still keep their shape because it's seven minutes minimum of added time. If something happens in the stoppage time, there's going to be continuous minutes added. So they have to be careful and keep their shape and stay composed. Oh, Campbell goes for the long ball forward. He saw Dennis creeping behind the defenders there. That was a, a good pass intentionally, but just a little bit overhit there. And Dennis wasn't able to get to it to Shane Campbell's effort there. Sure, Tivoli Gardens would want to see this one through. Have to see this one through. Gans. Business end of the season after this. They would have two matches left. As will Veer United. Six points to be attained from both teams. It will be difficult for Veer United having Mount Pleasant and Cavalier who are in a playoff spot. While as Tivoli Gardens do have an easier run to, to qualify.
So, Tivoli will have an easier run. They do have Malines and Humble Lion, who we say essentially would be out of the woods in terms of qualifying for the playoffs land. So it's going to be very, very interesting. But Humble Lion can get an odd win or two. So you can't just count them out and say, listen, because they have Malines and Humble Lion, they can get the six points. It's going to be very difficult. So potentially, Tivoli yeah. Gardens can attain those 19 points. But then again, Veer can get a win against uh, Mount Pleasant and Cavalier to get 20 and end at the top of the table. Fleming's with a very, very good clearance upfield. Lamar Neal. Reed goes with a long ball forward. Oh, the whistle goes, an offside call there against Morgan, who I think is complaining that he didn't think he was offside. Oh, there's Neil over to the right side. One by Tivoli. They have played smart in midfield all afternoon, this Tivoli team. And there goes Morgan on, challenged on the left side. Not many options at the moment in the box. Let's see how much he will hold this ball up. Well, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, commentators, Chris, they would always call it. Neil, long ball downfield. Great pass there to Plummer, who is under pressure from Price. Penny Cook wins it. Garnet under some pressure from Neil. Oh, a huge wrestling match going on, which Garnet wins. Now Morgan down the left flank. The flag again. Yeah, now, now Ducky's getting upset. And rightfully so. Rightfully so. His players, they're not playing their usual game, Lance, and it's frustrating. And that's the reason oh, why. Pennycook gets in the way again. Head of steel, I should call it. <laughs> Flemings. Pennycook has been very good defensively. Garnet has been very good too. Yeah, has had a strong game. I think yeah. it's his best game of the season, in my opinion. Dennis, but what a strike from here, Dennis, but he, his effort is off target. And he is disappointed. He knows that he should have done better there. Yeah, he should have done much better there. Wanted to catch it better on his foot to catch the man, Kewan Watkins, off, off guard, but couldn't. Yeah. Setting himself up there just now. Ricardo Dennis in the same way that he did against Harborview when he had struck. But his, his effort was off target. And again, again, Lance, I would I'd really want to commend Tivoli Gardens if this ends the way it has. They would have essentially, technically kept this lead for 90 minutes. Yeah, Neil still. Dennis now with a strike, doesn't get the power on the shot and Price gets in the way. Still the danger there for Tivoli. Neil is fouled on the edge of the box. So now an opportunity. Freaky here for Veer. Now an opportunity late into stoppage time. This is what I, I talked about. Keep your shape, be composed. You don't want to make a, a silly mistake. And now you present the Veer United with an opportunity to snatch a point from you. And you really want these three points actually more, I think, than Veer United. They're already at the top. And I, I'm not sure as to, oh, maybe clipped him at the yeah. bottom of his, 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 his right boot. Yeah, the Based on the angle we saw, we thought he got the ball, but seems to have clipped him on the right boot. Yeah. Who, who will claim this strike now, because this will effectively be Veer's last opportunity to get a point out of this game, because we are... 20 seconds away from the final whistle based on the clock and whatever time to be added on the referee thinks Watkins setting his wall up in the meantime Campbell standing behind it big tall man I think he had a stint at Reno some years ago as well Shane Campbell yeah so he'll be he really want this to go into the back of the net of I did do a game where late into the game there was a free kick. It was Malines United where they did get a 1 0 victory. Yeah. Against Tumble Lion. 
There's the strike on goal. Brilliant to save by Watkins. Neil approaching for the rebound, but didn't get to it in time. And Watkins is hurt. His right knee. Garnet really saving Q1 Watkins. That was a very good free kick from Tashane Campbell. And he parried that one out. And Te Tevin Garnet had to come across to prevent Neil. And now I see why. He wanted to stick his foot out, Lamar Neal, and it went right into the, the right knee of Q1 Watkins. But what a very, very important save from Tevin Garnett. And, and I'm telling you, if, if he did not come across there, would have been there for Lamar Neal to, to, to maybe, call it, maybe put that one into the back of the net. Yeah, well... You know, we've said that Tivoli all round has had solid performances here all day and I certainly think that Garnet has been a standout performer for them as well in midfield, had a tremendous game and right in the death there has produced a moment of real determination for Tivoli Garns and earned them a victory here over Veer, only Veer's second loss this season and Tivoli Guard is now confirming their number four spot in the league at the moment.